In this video, what I want to do is build a PDF viewer that is cross-platform and works on web, mobile, and we're going to do that together with React Native. So first things first, I'm going to start out with a blank template uh, from Expo. What I've done so far in this template, if you just go ahead and run Expo in it, which you can see right now in front of your screen, and after that, we're actually going to be working for the native piece um, we're going to supply native SDKs to it. So to interact with a native portion for Android and then iOS, let's go ahead and run another command, which you can see right now on your screen. And we're going to eject and separate the native code from the React JavaScript that we're working with into its own separate folders. And this is where I'm at right now. Okay, so let's actually go ahead and start doing the configuration. Now, this information can be found in the description below. I'm going to put all the links to the GitHub repositories that I'm using, and then that you can kind of go in and follow along. And if you get stuck with anything, just go ahead and comment below, and I'll get back to you and answer your questions. Now, there are some prerequisites that you might need for this one. Uh, so go ahead and get Expo. And then uh, one more thing that you got to do is install CocoaPods. CocoaPods would allow us to download any iOS native dependencies for the SDK that we're going to be using. So to do that, also go ahead and install the CocoaPods on your machine. One more prerequisite that I have configured prior to this video as well is setting up uh, my Xcode and to ensure that we have a kind of development device to test out on. Now, if you don't have a MacBook, don't worry, you can test it out with an actual device or you can test out the Android portion of it uh, through Android Studio. So let's jump in. So first things first, I'm actually following this blog right here that's been written. Now, I wanted to make this video just to make it easier for you guys to get started with. Um, so first things first, uh, we're gonna go ahead and kind of perform all the steps that are written here. And as I said, do the expo eject. So after that, we have started, let's actually do some of the configuration. So we gotta follow the instructions, how to add PDF to React Native module to the app. Okay, so from this guide right here, uh, we can jump in and start configuring our projects for Android and following the steps for iOS. It can be found right here. Again, don't even worry about it. I'm gonna post the links. So let's go ahead and kind of open the window side by side and we'll kind of go through it and set it up. So first, let's go ahead and configure Android side of things. So inside of it, let's add the following to the Android app build Gradle. So actually it's not build Gradle under a kind of domain, but under app, let's go in here and add it right here. So in here, we're looking for default config and we can add uh, the two additional lines. We're gonna add a line for the multi decks to be true and manifest placeholders. Uh, this is where we're going to be passing out our PDF Tron license key. And then inside of dependencies, let's actually go ahead and add that implements multi-dex application. Okay, perfect. So we're done with this file. Let's actually go back to the build Gradle right here and add, make sure that the min SDK version is set to 21. Pretty good. And inside of Android Gradle properties, let's add kind of placeholder where we're gonna put a PDF Tron license key. So it's available under Android and then Gradle properties file. I'm not even sure if I'm saying it right. Hope I am. If not, correct me in the comments. And okay, one more thing. So source main Android manifest XML. So source main Android, Mac, uh, yeah, perfect manifest. Uh, let's add two permissions right here. Now when copying over, just make sure you remove the pluses. It's a little annoying, but that's okay. Okay. And inside of the application, we got to add two more. When adding it, just make sure that you follow the proper XML structure here and then you either remove the closing, um, closing tag here or from there. And then inside of metadata, we actually can add a new entry right here, maybe just right in front of others. And again, just 
I like to format the same way as we already have it here. Perfect. And then uh, inside of the activity, we've got to remove the Android Windows Soft input mode. So just find that line right here and paste over it. Then remove this plus, and remove that closing bracket. Okay, so that looks good. And one more thing. So in now main application Java, which is located under main Java right here. So that's how we named it, main activity. Let's go ahead and replace this line. Make sure that you're in main application one. Sorry, I had it kind of collapse, I didn't see it. Uh, make sure you're in main application.java and inside of it, uh, we just got to replace this line right here that it not only implements the React application, but instead of application, it implements multi-dex application, something that's required to ensure that our SDK runs. You now let's import it at the top. Again, we can replace the application import with a multi-dex application. And I know that's a lot of steps to kind of get set up. However, you know, once we are done with all the setup and config, it's actually going to be pretty easy to develop and interact. I promise you. Perfect. So we're done with Android portion. Uh, it's pretty good. Let's move on to iOS. So inside of iOS, let's actually go ahead and modify uh, the pod file. And inside of it, uh, let's find the pod file here and just replace it with a pod here. Okay, that looks good to me. We copy it in the correct. So you just got to make sure you got to do it between the do and the end block. Save it. And inside of the iOS folder, we can run the pod install. So from my blank template directory, I can actually change it over CD iOS. And then, okay, change the directories to iOS. And now let's type out pod install. Now, if you get any errors at this uh, step right here, just ensure that you have Cocoa Pods installed like I showed in the earlier step. Right here, you can get it from the cocoapods.org and then just install it with kind of administrator privileges inside of your terminal. And what this step does, it downloads all the prerequisites needed uh, specifically for the iOS part of the native module. This point, I'm gonna pause. Oh, actually it's done, it's done. It was pretty quick. All right, so at this point, uh, what we've done, we configured Android and we configured iOS uh, kind of for the native side of things. So at this point, we can actually, we're, we're done with this, with those steps. Let's go back to our blog and see what's next. So inside of here, we're actually gonna be creating uh, the PDF viewer itself. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and create new components. Uh, before we do that, let's actually install some of the kind of some of the modules that we're going to be using that. So to do that, uh, let's actually move up in our directory one level. And after that, inside of the blank template, kind of this is where I'm at. Uh, let's go ahead and install them, uh, install the dependencies. And again, I'll try to make those bigger in the video. I realized when I'm typing those out, they're kind of too small and hard for you to see. So I'm listening to your feedback. Again, if there's something I can improve or do better, just go ahead and post it in the comments. So we can do npm i here, and then we can do at pdftron slash web viewer. And another one is gonna be github two dots pdftron slash pdftron react native. Okay, so that would just go ahead and kind of install all the necessary dependencies, place them in the node modules, and that's where we're going to be kind of using them and placing them. Okay, awesome. So installed all the necessary package that we needed. So, so far within the configuration for Android, we've done configuration for iOS. Let's take care of the website and uh, let's go ahead and create a new folder at the same root directory level. We'll call it web and inside of it, we'll create another folder called lib and this is where like all my web viewer uh, kind of dependencies are going to go. So inside of the node module, so let's actually copy them over. Let's go ahead and find at pdftron, which is right here. Go into public and select core folder and UI folder. That's all you need. And place them, copy paste them into the lib. 
Okay, perfect. So we'd copy that over and we're going to reference that. Okay, so at this point I've done all of the Android configuration, iOS and web. Let's go ahead and create a new folder, again in the root directory. It's called components. And inside of components, uh, let's create another folder called viewer. And this is where we're going to kind of create our viewer module. And here we're going to create a couple of the files. We're going to create one for the web, if somebody is trying to access our uh, app from the web, and then uh, one for the native piece of it. Now, inside of it, let's go ahead and call viewer TSX. Okay. So inside of viewer TSX, we can actually copy this code right here, which been uh, kind of done for us ahead of the time, which is nice. And I'll just walk you walk you through what's happening here. So inside of it, so this is going to be our web component, uh, viewer TSX. We're just importing React and uh, a couple of the React dependencies like use effect and use ref. Uh, we're also importing a web viewer, so the package that we've just installed from at PDF to web viewer. Uh, we're defining the props that we're going to be passing to the viewer. In this case, it's just a simple document string that's going to contain a URL of the document that we're going to be passing it into. Uh, inside of it, uh, we're creating a, um, a use ref, uh, kind of HTML div element where we're going to be mounting our viewer component inside of this use effect. So use effect with uh, kind of blank array as dependencies for this use effect, just going to run one time, kind of like on component did mount. And uh, after that, this code is going to be executed. And we're just going to pass in the document that we received from the props into the viewer to load as initial doc. And remember earlier we were setting up kind of the web and then lib folder. So this is the path that we're referencing inside of the lib. If we're going to be running into any errors during the web viewer initialization and you know it complains that it can't find the path, this is this is the path to uh, kind of look for. Make sure you named it properly here and that those two folders are present uh, at that specific level. Okay, so this portion looks good to me. Let's actually move on and uh, implement viewer native TSX. So inside of our components, let's create a new file called viewer native TSX. And this is a great way for kind of React Native to say, okay, if, if somebody is trying to access from iOS or an Android device, make sure that you use this component instead of that one. So we create a new viewer native.tsx. And it's very similar to the viewer component, except it's going to be leveraging our native um, kind of components and native SDK. And inside of it, very similar, our viewer props are the same document kind of URL or the path to the document. But instead, we're actually going to be initializing React Native PDF Tron, and then uh, we can pass our product key afterwards to it to initialize it. And then after it returns the document view uh, with the document kind of passed into here. So now to ensure that we actually export uh, the module kind of for the viewer native and viewer TSX and it's able, let's go ahead and create a new uh, file called uh, package.json uh, within, within this project right here. And then inside of it, let's just kind of declare our uh, component uh, right here. So we're just calling it viewer and it's available at viewer. You can provide the version number, whatever it is. And again, if you're just following along, you can refer back to a fully ready to go sample right here. You know, if something doesn't make sense, you can just kind of go in here and ensure that uh, you have everything copied over correctly. Um, and same thing for kind of, this is where I'm getting all of this information from. Okay, and again, those links are going to be available. Okay, so at this point, we've created our kind of component viewer that's going to be providing us uh, web viewer for uh, web viewing and then kind of native viewing on iOS and Android. So at this point, let's go ahead and kind of import our viewer inside of the app TSX. And after that, we're going to go ahead and run the app. Okay, so inside of the app TSX, all we're going to do is actually import the My Viewer component. So at the top of the screen, just go ahead and say, okay, import My Viewer from, and then provided the path so it's going to be located at. Uh, from the same level, components, slash, uh, viewer. Okay, that's good. All right, and inside of here, so in the view, um, let's take out the text. We don't need it. 
and just just place the kind of my viewer with the URL of the document that we want to open just for testing. Uh, we're passing in that prop, uh, and inside of it, let's not worry about any of the kind of background color aligning items or justifying content, and remove that. Okay, so at this point, everything looks good. We have our viewer component um, all set up. Now we're gonna run. Now, if you're used to running the project with Expo, you probably go like something like Expo start or just NPM start, and then uh, you have this like Expo debugging, which is super nice. However, because we did Expo eject, we no longer can use Expo start. We have to start a kind of each uh, individual path or kind of simulate web iOS and Android by a separate command. Now those commands are actually available to you inside of package.json. Uh, so we can say start will react native start, run Android, run iOS, and run uh, web. So let's actually test out uh, web one uh, to make sure we have everything working on the web side of things, just because it's the most easiest one. So just type in npm run web. It will start expo. And then after that, build our app and open it up uh, in, inside of the our application. And you can't actually see it, but I, I'm going to move it. Here we go. We have our app running, as you can see, with the web viewer from the document we loaded. OK, great. This step worked. Now, at this point, let's actually test out and see how it looks like on iOS. And we can have them kind of side by side to see uh, what we're dealing with. Now, to do that, actually open up your Xcode. Uh, you can actually go open developer tool, simulator, and open up the simulator. Um, in this case is gonna be iPhone, iPhone 11, it's gonna load up. And then after that, we can run the iOS and we'll place kind of our application that we wrote and run it on the iOS device. So let's do that. So back inside of the terminal, I'm just gonna stop uh, the expo server that I've been running. And instead, I'm just going to say npm run iOS. And now this process is going to be quite a while because it has to go ahead and kind of build the app uh, specifically for the, for, you know, for the iPhone. All right, so we got this error. Uh, our NPT document view was not found in the UI manager. Let's actually go back and make sure that we didn't miss anything uh, within our project. Uh, so to do that, I'm just going to stop this um, kind of server from running. I'm just going to click on my console as well. And I think the error lies inside of the plot file here, inside of the iOS. We just forgot to install that uh, dependency. So let's actually go back to the iOS folder, change the directory to iOS, and let's run the pod install one more time, uh, ensuring that we actually place the pod PDF net in here. Um, so as you can see here, it's installing a run PDF Tron, which previously we forgot to do that uh, because of the order of operations. Uh, we were we we installed the kind of pod files first, and then we ran um, npm i, where we actually pulled down the run PDF Tron dependency inside of our node modules. So I think we should be pretty good to go now. Let's change directories back to the main one and run npm run iOS. Hey, check it out. And now we actually have completed the process on iOS. We fixed all the issues that we've been having. And as you can see, it actually uses the native uh, portion of our SDK. So this is how our uh, web offering looks like. And as you can see, in terms of UI, it's really consistent. However, it's borrowing kind of native iOS elements to make kind of that experience very tailored to specifically the device they're using. Kind of, but providing consistent uh, experience, you know, when it comes to document viewing, scrolling, uh, highlighting, annotation, exact same way uh, that a web one would do. Now, for this video, you can test out the Android one and make sure that it works for you. I don't have the emulator installed, but rest assured, it will work across all your devices. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. To stay tuned with more content coming out like this go ahead and subscribe. Also, please comment below, give me your feedback, see what you want to kind of build and develop next.